Hi everyone, welcome back to another episode of Under the Radar, Over the Moon. It's November, the leaves are falling, there's a cold snap in the air, and Thanksgiving is around the corner. I am thankful to all of you for reading our books. I am thankful to Amanda Roundtree for being a wonderful co-worker. What are you thankful for? I'm, I'm pretty thankful for Chris, but I, I don't know. Is he not here today? I don't know where he is, but I'm telling you, I went busting for a piece of pumpkin pie. I don't know Me why. Me too. I'm both. <laughs> <laughs> and on that happy note, Chris, what are we drinking this time? Drinking a kind of slightly insane bird that we like to eat this time of year <gasps> and coincidentally drink. Hey, love it. Responsibly. Responsibly. <laughs> So here we go, kids. Oh. Have, did you drink it already? No. <laughs> happy Thanksgiving. Happy fall. I'm thankful to both of my coworkers who are so wonderful. I'm very lucky. And we're thankful to all of you for checking out our books. So here we go. Cheerio. Cheerio. Gobble, gobble. Here we go. Owie! Well, that's all the time we have. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so who's going first? Hmm. 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 Okay, I guess I'll go first. Andy Lou, Andy Lou. So, my first book, Ragdoll by Daniel Cole. This one right here, this is a debut novel set in London that starts off when this body is discovered hanging in this apartment. But it's not just a simple body, if there is such a thing. It is six bodies that have been dismembered and sewn back together into this gruesome thing that starts the hunt for what becomes known as the Ragdoll Killer. And after, shortly after the body is found, this, um, an additional list is sent to the media that has additional names that will be killed and the dates that they will be killed. And the last name on the list is one of the main detectives on this case. So behind all of this already craziness is another case from a few years before that affects all of the detectives on the case and that kind of holds the key to what's going on in the present day. This was just a fabulous mystery procedural and I really loved the dynamic between all the detectives and it had a truly twisty ending. Um, it was a little gruesome but not like overly graphic. I got a couple of hints of like maybe a Karen Slaughter um, and I think it'll also be great for fans of Tana French and Ian Rankin. So if you love a great mystery police procedural, definitely check it out. Ragdoll by Daniel Cole. Let's, let's keep the mystery thriller theme going with go. Andrew Taylor, The Ashes of London. Uh, you'll know him from his previous works, The American Boy, The Scent of Death, and The Silent Boy. And this takes place uh, in the aftermath of the Great London Fire in 1666. Just a really cool setting. Um, and it's a murder mystery. In the wake of this fire, a charred body is found in the skeletal remains of St. Paul's Cathedral. And two really intriguing characters are swept up into it. Kind of this unwilling government investigator whose father was kind of socially outcast, so he's kind of stuck working for the government. And then this unwilling bride who commits a pretty atrocious crime, deserving in my mind, you'll have to read, um, but they're thrust together and are trying to discover who is behind this murder. Again, it's London is in disarray, it's in ashes, and it's still just pulsating with this kind of chaotic energy, so you're just really in the time and the historic details are just simply amazing, but you don't get bogged down by them, you're just there you can feel the heat on your face and the ash in the air. So if you love like The Day of Atonement mm -hmm. by David mm -hmm. Liss or An Officer and a Spy by Robert Harris, please pick this up. Um, it's just a great work of historical fiction. It's the start of a new series, so uh, start of something cool here. Andrew Taylor's The Ashes of London. All right, Lisa carries The Stolen Child. She hasn't written a novel um, in 10 years, so but it was worth the wait. This is set in an island off of Ireland. So it's about 12 miles, I think it's west of Galway. There's, there's no electricity, there's no running water. I mean, it's, it's basically um, an island with no amenities, no doctors, anything. The government wants to take the island back and so the people need to leave this island. There's magical realism in this book. 
but it's not heavy handed. It's about primarily these two sisters who are in their 20s and they have lived there their whole lives and, um, and, and one of them possesses a certain power. She has a son and um, she's very protective of him and um, they're, they know that eventually they're gonna have to leave this island. And a uh, very gregarious woman named Bridget is uh, from America. She happens upon this island. She makes it her business to get there because she has an uncle who had a cottage there and she has now inherited it. And so she's kind of a stranger. She's an outsider and they, uh, they are wary of her, but they know that she wants something else from this island, not just the cottage. And there's this mystical, magical well that may bring um, miracles to those who need them. And so that's where the fantasy and the magical realism comes in. Okay. Here we are. So we have a really cool uh, kind of modern gothic psychological thriller. It's Carol Goodman's The Widow's House. You'll know her from her bestseller, The Lake of Dead Languages. And again, this is a really cool modern thriller that follows this kind of uh, this writing couple who has to move from their hip Brooklyn neighborhood to this very creepy old house in the Hudson River Valley that's owned by their old English professor. Uh, the husband in this relationship has, is kind of a one-hit wonder writer who had this great bestseller, but nothing since. And the wife is just very eager to please. She's also a writer, but hasn't written in years. And she's very psychologically delicate, always eager to please, but also harbors a lot of frustration with their relationship. So they move to this creepy old house in the Hudson River Valley to hopefully find themselves and start writing again. But the wife starts to kind of feel like she's becoming in tune with past tragedies, of which there are many in this house. It's so creepy and atmospheric. She thinks there's ghosts. There's the, she hears wailing and, and all these kind of signals from the past. But she's also fra psychologically frail, so you don't know until the very end what exact is happening. Um, but she's just a very intriguing narrator. Carol Goodman is really great at just developing her characters. He, the husband, you'll hate him, but he's still very human. The wife, again, is just all over the place, but you'll, you're on her side, and she's just thrilling to see. So if you love, like, oh, it's very influenced by Charlotte Perkin Gilman, Gilman's uh, The Yellow Wallpaper, Daphne du Maurier's Rebecca, um, or uh, ASA Harrington's The Silent Wife. So I just loved this book. I hope you give it a shot. It's Carol Goodman's The Widow's House. So there you go. Those are our picks for the month of November. We hope that you like them, and we thank you so much for all that you do for our books and our authors. So happy Thanksgiving, happy fall. Fall into a good book, leaf through its pages. Have a wonderful Thanksgiving. Thank you so much. We're so grateful for all that you do for our books and our authors. Here's to you. Gobble, gobble. Mm -hmm.